Senator Murray. Thank you. Um, as you all know, I have spent the last few years cautioning the VA against moving forward too quickly with implementation of the CHR program before the facilities and the system were ready to go. A year ago, we held a hearing about the EHR program with Secretary Madonna, where I raised those concerns. And in the 12 months since then, I have heard even more concerns from the staff on the ground in Spokane about how this faulty system is making their jobs unacceptably difficult. Now we have some more Inspector General reports substantiating many of their concerns and equally disturbing has been VA's lack of transparency and cooperation with the IG. Now just this month I met with veterans and providers in Spokane to hear about their experiences with the Cerner system and frankly I was pretty outraged by what I heard. There continues to be flaws with the EHR that risk patient care and safety and VA's written testimony does not match what I heard from the providers. Uh, I don't want to hear, I don't, rosy picture, minimizing the concerns. I don't want to hear any of that. VA might have inherited this program, but you own it now and VA owes our veterans a system that works and that puts patients first. And I've said it before, VA cannot roll out this system anywhere else in Washington State until the issues with this system are resolved and the Inspector General's recommendations are implemented by the VA and, and closed by the Inspector General. And the focus right now has to be fixing this uh, in Spokane. Now, I want to ask you, uh, Dr. Adiram, you answered in regards to someone else's question, question a few minutes ago about how many outages there had been, and you said 24 outages and 48 performance degradation, or um, Secretary Delbeni. Um, well, Spokesman Review put it printed in an article just now, just yesterday, that uh, they, they have a document that suggests those numbers underestimate the true frequency of disruptions in the system. The document they say they have includes more than 180 incidents classified as degradations, downtime, and full or partial outages that have affected the system's users just since September 2021. Do you know why that might be? Dr. Durham? I really don't know what document you're talking about. Um, we, we have ways of uh, determining what are degradations and outages um, directly, so I really can't explain um, that document that I haven't seen. Well, I'm happy to see if we can get that for you, but there appears to be a huge discrepancy between what the VA is publicly saying and how many are reported, so we need an answer back to that. Sure. Um, I also want to say, you know, I, I've been really concerned about the EHR's impacts on patient safety, including the well-documented instance of veterans getting the wrong medication or having their medication stopped. Now we have a report from the Inspector General on another example of patient safety risk, this unknown cue. Uh, the IGA, IG has documented that despite having received evidence of patient harm as early as December 2021, the program executive director told the House Veterans Affairs Committee in April 22 she didn't believe there was evidence the system had harmed patients or that it will going forward. Now, as I just said, I talked to veterans who have suffered serious harm. I've talked to them personally as a result of the EHR failures. I've talked to providers personally who are doing double the work to make sure they meet their patients' needs while navigating this system. I continue to insist that facilities like Spokane keep their overhires to manage this workload. So Dr. Cox, is it responsible for VA to continue rolling out this program with its existing flaws and its inadequate workarounds when there have clearly been instances of patient harm and when monitoring patient safety reports could become unsustainable? Thank you, Senator Murray. So I'd like to say that like you, I've traveled to Spokane, I did twice last year, and got firsthand from those hardworking clinicians and frontline staff a demonstration of the, the challenges and the struggles that they were facing. And I believe we owe them a debt of gratitude because the first step in solving any problem No one is, is suggesting that they don't deserve a huge de debt of gratitude. They are working incredibly hard there. My question to you is, um, is it responsible to continue to roll this out? I believe that because of the dedication and the vigilance of those clinicians at Spokane who reported issues 
and raise them to our attention so that we could begin to work on them and mitigate them and ultimately provide permanent solutions to them that it, we have been able to anticipate where we need to put additional safeguards in place to reduce the risk at Walla Walla, at Columbus, and at the two sites in Oregon that have gone live since then. The only way that this system is being used effectively, I believe, is because, as you said, our dedicated employees are putting in double time, double checking, triple checking things to, to make sure that the care that they intended to deliver to veterans is in fact intended. That's not the way it's supposed to work. So we are hearing that from our employees just as you have heard, heard from them directly and we are taking those concerns seriously and working shoulder to shoulder with them. But you, you believe that the system should continue to be rolled out? I believe that we've taken sufficient steps to build additional safeguards knowing where the vulnerabilities are based on the experience in Spokane to reduce the risk of additional harm or to reduce the likelihood of uh, similar problems occurring at other sites. Okay. I, I am way over my time, Mr. Chairman, thank you, but I do want to an answer back on the number of outages. <laughs> 